Hi there, and thank you for joining me uh, today. We'll we go over using star steer for mapping, pad drilling, and well planning. Um, so this is just a really brief workflow where I want to show you how you can use star steer and your existing data um, to plan an upcoming well. Um, this particular example is for a pad, but a lot of the principles still apply even if you're drilling a single well. So let's just take a quick look and map view here of the wells that we're going to be dealing with. So I have three wells on this particular pad. Um, I have a vertical offset down here in the south, and then I do have one single horizontal well just to the east. Uh, in case you can't see the scale here, they're actually quite close together. These wells are very close together. And I have a proposed well that's going to be on the east side of the pad there. Um, so I'm going to use the data that we have learned from these other wells uh, and use it to help me drill my proposed well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a grid um, for our uh, the target zone in here, so we can help uh, so it can help us with the structure while we're drilling. Um, this project does already have a few grids, um, so we are going to uh, we're going to create a new one though for our target zone. This is for an uphole target. I'm not going to go through the details of how to do this. Um, we do have other videos showing you how to do mapping. So I'm going to go through it really quickly here. Let's go into geosteering mode so we can see it. Um, I'm going to create it for the Duvernay 4. So, and I'm going to use it for all of my segments. I know that I probably should hide my heel and toe, but we're not going to go through those right now um, for cone of uncertainty, etc. But for sake of speed today, we're just going to go through and do all of the Duvernay 4. And we're going to send those horizons to the polygons as points so that we can grid them. Okay, so I've created a polygon set for my four horizontal wells, and now I'm gonna do the same thing for my type well, um, because even though this is a singular point, it's still a useful point. Um, it probably has, it's actually probably the most accurate point simply because we're not dealing with TVD drift or anything like that or cone of uncertainty. So I definitely want that singular point in there. Okay, um, and in case you're unfamiliar with how this works, just really quickly, let's look at my 6 of 26 well here. Um, so I've taken this Duvernay 4 horizon, which is along here, it's at the base of the um, shaded area, and I've converted it to points. So you can see there it's, it's uh, created a point along um, each segment boundary and along the uh, survey points. So those are the points that we're going to be using for gridding. Okay, turn that off. Okay, so now I have a point set for each of the four horizontals that have been drilled, as well as that vertical type well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to rename it right now. Four, and I'm going to bulk select, maybe. There we go, and drag them into that Duvernay four. Um, uh, folder there. So now all of them are in there. Okay, so let's go into the mapping mode. So I went to mode mapping and uh, my input here is set at Duvernay 4. And everything else I'm going to leave as auto. The outline, um, I'll, leave, I'll leave that up to the software. The grid, I'm going to create a new one. I'm not going to overwrite any existing ones. In terms of the geometry, I'll let it select the size and how best to uh, view that data or uh, grid that data and what, what angle to use. And I'll leave the algorithm as auto, uh, but it will be using convergent interpolation just because we're not using the trend of any other um, maps at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. Uh, it's really quick, it's already done here. And you'll see it there, there's my new Duvernay 4 grid. If I check it on in cross section, um, you can see it show up here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you'll see it's just really a smoothed version of the horizon, which is great. That's a really good sign. It's taken this data, combined it with the other data points, um, and gridded it along, along this trend here. So that's great to see. Um, let's actually look at it in map view. So there it is. So you can see it's been rotated by 12 degrees to make the most of the data and to leave blank spots um, to a minimum. Um, and now I can see where, um, what sort of structure I might expect 
uh, regionally while I'm drilling my proposed well. I will point out that we're probably seeing some bullseyes here and potentially along this well. Um, I would recommend uh, you watching the mapping video if you haven't already and it will explain to you what these are and how we can minimize them. But for what we're doing right now today, this will be perfect. Okay, so now that we have done this, I'm actually going to hop into my proposed well. So let's set it as active, turn it on, that would be useful. There we go, turn off the grid for now. Okay, so right now the red dashed line is my um, proposed well, and the target zone for here is between Duvernay 3 and 5. So I'm actually going to turn, I'm going to leave my 6 of 26 on, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm going to turn off the 4. There we go. So what's highlighted right now is my target zone between 3 and 5, and I I'm looking at my proposed well, and let's say I created this proposal um, a long time ago, long before any of the rest of the wells on this pad were drilled, and I wasn't really aware of what sort of structure we were dealing with. Um, and as I can see now, I've learned that maybe structure wasn't what I expected, and it doesn't really follow structure, especially that last half there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and adjust that plan so that it follows um, the, the anticipated structure. Now let's just hop back into the map view really quickly. Um, you'll see the 6 of 26 well that I had on in the background. That's the well right here. So it's closest to my proposed well. That's why I'm going to use it as opposed to one that's quite far away. These wells were useful for the gridding, um, but I personally would prefer to use the closest one uh, when we're going to redo the plan. Part of that, and I want to remind you, is that we are in TVD scale which means that um, if there was quite a difference, it, well, not even quite a difference, if there's a lot of structure between these two wells, um, my proposed well might actually lay above or below in this view, um, the target zone of that well in the background. So I just want you to keep that in mind. That there might be some structure between these two wells that won't allow them to lay directly one over on top of the other. So please keep that in mind. Um, for this example though, it's fine, the wells are close enough. So what I'm going to do is I am not going to adjust the well plan up hole. That is something that's best left to um, your, your directional company. Their software is specifically designed to deal with the 3D space, to deal with the nudges, the kickoff points, those sorts of things. We are just going to be dealing with the horizontal section of the well plan today. Okay, so the well plan uh, lands really right where I wanted it. Uh, and then it starts to go off the tracks. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hover my mouse over the point though at which I feel that I need to start making changes. And I'm looking in the bottom most left corner along that ticker box at the MD value. 3,546.2 um, meters. Yeah, this is in meters. Uh, MD. So it's after this point that I'm going to delete my my plan. I don't want that. So I'm going to go to approximately mm, 35, maybe 35, 40 in my well plan. Okay, so I'm going to right click on my well plan, go to the spreadsheet, scroll down to approximately 35, what's the closest? 35, right in here. So at 35, 38, that's the last point I liked. So everything beyond that so I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to delete it. Okay, perfect. So now if you look at my screen behind here, my well, my proposed well ends right at that MD value. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and click okay. Okay. So I'm going to create a target line for my proposed well. This is how we do this. And there it is. Right now it's just a, a solid line, but if I go to my target line format, I'm going to first extend the trajectory. If I had a maximum dog leg that I, um, I couldn't go over, I could also put it in here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click Edit Target. Okay, so um, actually, you know what? I'm going to make my target line a different color so that it's obvious. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this target line tool, and you'll see I'm getting a dashed line. Oh, I'm actually going to change the well color, I think. So, too many colors. Eh, that's okay. We'll just 
just leave it at red. Okay, let's go back to our target line, sorry. Okay, so I am just going to edit my target and move it along, let's zoom in a little bit. Move it along um, so that it's following a path that I'm happy with. So I don't wanna go too deep, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play with this. And okay, I need a bit of an inflection point there, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Append. And now my um, little plan has actually turned into um, a solid line. I can't move it anymore. And what happened when I clicked that, I'm gonna open up the spreadsheet here. It added, <coughs> excuse me, more, uh, new points um, along, along the plan to my proposal. So we'll talk about what that means here in a little bit. But let's just keep doing this for the target line. Edit target. I don't want to spend too much time doing this. There we go. Append. There, it makes it part of the plan now. There we go. Trying obviously not to put in too many inflection points. I'd like to keep my, dr my drillers happy. Pend. But I do want to try and keep in the middle of my, oh, maybe I went a little bit too low. I could always go back and adjust that later, but I want to keep in the middle of my target. There we go. Okay. Pend. Okay, so this is my new well plan. Um, like I said, I might want to go through and adjust this slightly. I, I kind of went close to the bottom here and here, but we won't do that right now, but I could always go in and adjust those. But there we go. I have a well plan that now much better resembles the structure that I anticipate um, encountering when I'm drilling. So I think that well plan is going to suit us better than the original. And so I'm going to go right click on my proposed well, open up the spreadsheet. And now I have a spreadsheet um, where everything from about what was that value? What was that MD value? 3,500 approximately. Everything after approximately 3,500. Okay, so yes, if I remember correctly, this was the last point that was from the original. Everything above this was original. And everything after this is something I created. So now I can go ahead and pass this along to my um, DD company and have them, um, you know, make, make any adjustments that they feel necessary, but at least now we have a better path. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do now is to actually run a prog script in Python um, that will um, produce a prog for me based on the grids that I have. So Ireton and Duvernay through to Duvernay 4. Um, so I'm going to open up the Python tab. This particular one is under um, the templates, under TOPS, operation, tops operations, TOPS from grid intersections. So I'm going to right click copy, right click, paste. Now I have a usable version of this. If you haven't seen our new um, Python calculator interface, this is it. It's a lot more straightforward. As always, I would recommend starting by reading the requirements and descriptions, but now I don't need to actually work with the code itself if I don't want to. So the values that I'm dealing with here, I need to drag my grids. So I'm gonna uh, bulk select using my shift key I'm going to drag them and put them into the value. So now it's going to read the Ireton, Duvernay, one, two, three, four. And the lateral uh, name is the active one, which is perfect. My proposed well is the active one. So we have all the data we need to create a prog. I'm going to hit run. It does list out all the values for me here, um, but a little bit more useful, I just close that, um, is in the proposed well. I now actually have a top set called proposed well prog. Let's open up the spreadsheet. So now I have for the Ireton, Duvernay, Duvernay 1, 2, 3, and 4, the anticipated MD at which I will encounter these, um, as well as TVD and VS um, and some C values are also in there. These are based off of the grids um, that we have here. Let me actually turn them on so we can see them. So here are the grids, I've turned them on. Um, they loop back just because there is a, um, a back build in these wells. I'm not gonna bother hiding it right now, but um, you can see here where they crossed. 
it created a top and it has recorded that MD, TVD, TVD sub C value for me. So it's now just created my, my prog for me here. So I know this was just a really brief overview of what can be done, um, but here we are at 15 minutes and I have now uh, essentially created a grid to help me. Um, I have redrawn my well, my well plan so that it actually stays in the anticipated zone and I have created a prog. Um, obviously this data was already prepared and ready to go, but you can see just how quickly uh, and efficiently this workflow is. And I really hope that it helps you out. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us and we can help you out. Thank you for watching.